Uh, to me, that's a great movie because it's the, his starting attitude is kind of like uh, almost like a resignation, like I don't even want to be here on the planet. You know, he was just so carrying so much anger and resentment, and grievances, and then it's like it just shows you the stuff that he went through is almost like the reversal, just reversing all the thoughts of the world in terms of what's truly meaningful and what's helpful. He's kind of in it, what's in it for me, what am I going to get out of this, and that's his attitude, and it's like, well, just hang in and play the game for as long as it takes to get, get something out of it. He didn't even know what the outcome was, but that's, it's pretty much how it is with spirituality. You enter in and you don't really mm -hmm. have a clue where it's going to take you or what you're going to experience. What's going to fall away? You kind of it's like a, some kind of a new ride at the uh, amusement park. You go in, you go down, the, you drop through a chute, you land, and you think, you think you got some solid feet, solid ground, and then boom, then the floor drops out, and you drop down again, and you kind of get your feet again, feel like you're there now. Then the floor drops out. Yeah. So it's kind of like a floor drop out uh, journey, because the floor keeps dropping out, and you're in the free fall. You could tell most of the movie he was like in total free fall. He just had nothing to grasp. It took everything he had just to stay in and continue on. All these memories, childhood memories of his father, his grandfather, all the stuff that we've seen over these the course of these six weeks, people facing a lot of memories coming out from childhood, a lot of a lot of dark closets and closed doors that are reopened. Mm. Yeah. All for a good reason. Mm. It's all worth it. Mm. Just keep opening and opening until there's nothing left. Mm. Keep dropping and dropping until there's nowhere else to, to fall. It's interesting the lessons because the the family was just so filled with greed that they were like they dropped off really quick, and sometimes that happens in this life when you go on the spiritual journey. You your entire world as you've known it, the people that you've loved or the people that were surrounding you are part of a vibration that you are meant to completely drop below and leave behind and and and. In some cases it's, it is that way where you may just kind of, they may just like drop out of your life really quick and maybe for many years, if not for, for a lifetime. And that's just part of it. Jesus was talking about that when he said, mother will be turned against daughter and father will be turned against son for my namesake. He was, he was saying that you're going to go through vibrational changes that will take you deeper and deeper inside your mind and some of those past associations, unless they serve the awakening, they will fall away and fade away. And what was once associated as being love, you know, you start to go beneath the surface and realize that it wasn't, wasn't love. It was interesting in this movie that, that there were one of the uh, steps was to kind of go out there, go again to the Thanksgiving Day dinner and extend gratitude, and uh, yeah, that was a, that was kind of a going back, you know, facing anything that's there, and then just seeing that uh, he he offered his gift, mm -hmm. and then he left, and that was the end in the movie of the biological family, his his mother and his other ones. He just kind of dropped down, and that's the way it goes. You you have to go on this journey. And you have to let the Holy Spirit and the intuition within bring to you those encounters and, and opportunities that will allow you to release the beliefs. And that may or may not involve a biological family. It depends on, on the Spirit, really. It's not, it's not for any of us to decide.
But that was another beautiful aspect of it, just how things just dropped, dropped and dropped and dropped away with it. And his possessions, you know, his car, his apartment, furniture, everything, uh, that was like a relinquishment phase and, and read his grandfather said, yeah, you know, you haven't really lived until you've lost everything and he said, oh, I lost everything four times. It's a great place to start, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. kind of that emptiness. Yeah, I think a lot of us have had those moments where we've gone through those periods where we've kind of cleared things out. Mm -hmm. Some of you are, were here for a number of weeks, you remember Mate when he came here, he, mm -hmm. he was going through that period of relinquishment. <coughs> but actually seeing the blessing in it, you know, actually mm -hmm. quite, quite happy and joyful with that, mm -hmm. going through that period. Mm -hmm. Knowing that he was just ready for the next stage, the next step, it wasn't an end point. Just a transition, yeah. That's a beautiful witness there too, because the ego likes to put things in kind of, in like final terms, like, oh, where will you be? What will you be if you lose everything? You know, it threatens the mind, you know, kind of like, how will you survive? How will you make it? You know, with all these threats, and it's threatened, quite threatened of, of this loosening from possessions. Because that's its uh, central creed. Yeah. Whereas, of course, the miracles teacher Tara Singh used to quote this this old saying, and it was about a king and his subjects back in the days of, you know, warlords and and kings and castles and and peasants and you know the old feudal system, you know, and the quote was. King trembles before a man who wants nothing. Because the king needs subjects and peasants to be a king in that old system. And so it's it's a self concept thing we were talking about earlier when when if someone shows up that doesn't play the role and doesn't uh, uphold the role, then that's the big threat to the ego. It's a big threat. Because it seems like a big change is on the way, but it's actually, it's the big opening. Opening to a new kind of kingdom. Mm. A new, completely new kingdom. Without peasants and slaves and subjects. Inferior, superior, that old game is out the door. Mm. Mm. Well, it was soft glow tonight. <laughs> There's a lot of mmms in the movie too, and mm, 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 mm. the subtitles. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Put things in perspective. And he said that, mm, I remember that part in the movie when the, the woman who only wanted him for the money, she came back to the apartment and uh, now she was interested again mm -hmm. and then she went to the restroom and he just left, he just felt guided to just go like to the hospital he, and it was beautiful, like he didn't even feel the prompt to say anything like Oh, now you come back. <laughs> you only want me for the money. He didn't need to say anything. He just left on the way. Followed his purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's kind of neat. You don't have to explain. <coughs> or explain or justify yourself. Just follow your purpose. Mm -hmm. Beautiful part of 
joining too in the intuition of um, Lee Merriweather, you know, Mr. Hamilton's partner, who after he's come back from Ecuador, you know, and he's you know with the, the little girl and her mother and he calls and he said, I need need to I know I know you think I'm crazy, but I need to borrow Red's jet. And, and Mr. Hamilton was rolling his eyes like and then Lee Merriweather on the speakerphone comes in the the assistant. Okay, well, we'll have the jet. <laughs> have the jet waiting. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Was that joining, that intuitive joining of like what is what is really called for here? There were times when he was pretty firm. There were times when he even walked out. And at the beginning, and the young man uh, had to Jason had to follow him down the hall to chase him down and. And then there was times when you know, his assistant stepped in, and that's beautiful. Just shows that that really relationships is given over to the Holy Spirit. It's really an art, you know, to when to come in to be firm, when to be extremely generous and soft, and you know, mm -hmm. just let that come through, just as it has to be to to let the miracle pour through. Very beautiful. You've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know no when to run. <laughs> you got to let the Holy Spirit lead you all the way. <laughs> There'll be time enough for laughing when the process is done. <laughs> yeah. There was another one that was very beautiful. It was when the daughter told told him, like, I want Christmas. And that was for me, like, her asking, like, the Holy Spirit, like, I need to be shown. Like, yeah. You really need to show me now that that love is real. Yeah. Yeah. And really demanding it. <laughs> yeah. That was her. She perceived it as a real need, and that was helpful as well. Yeah. Like, she emphasized so now when he yeah. said that could take me <laughs> one or two weeks. <laughs> now. That's how I felt the day before yesterday in the morning. Like Holy Spirit, if you if you even hear me, <laughs> show me now. If you're there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was so shown. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes you're right on the edge, just on the edge of it, like, okay, I'm breaking up here, I can't take it anymore. Help! <laughs> then shoop, it comes with that sincere, yeah, yeah. And I think it was, this kind of echoed our main theme here, which was, was about getting out of the, the getting mode and getting into the giving mode. I mean, really, that seems to be what the central theme of the movie was. That mm -hmm. He just didn't know any different. He was just so used to getting his way and a uh, credit card with no limit and just, you know, not having even a job or in any opportunity to extend. He was so closed off and kind of depressed, kind of going around with almost like a proud kind of strut in his walk and quite depressed and, and disconnected, but then, you know, by the end it was like down the tunnel of humbleness, down and down and down, where he just became more and more humble and more and more in the experience of the miracle of giving, mm -hmm. just giving for the, the sake of giving, you know, for this, because he felt he was getting so much from it. <laughs> 